G'day guys and welcome back to another episode of Breaking Down the Charts. Today is a very exciting episode. We've taken some massive, massive positions on a lot of the coins that we've been tracking over the past couple of weeks. So congratulations obviously to everyone who'd been following those recommendations and especially those who had taken some positions at, at the right times. Uh, the Discord's been going absolutely off. We've had a lot of new people come in, which has been great. Some people who are pe previous traders uh, bringing a lot to the table and um, actually contributing a lot to our existing members as well. So thank you very much to you guys. It's been awesome. Uh, we've loved expanding out the mining store community. It's one of our favorite things about our business. Uh, but today we don't have too much time because there is a lot of charts to jump into. Uh, so I'm going to jump straight into it and we're going to start looking at BTC. So Bitcoin is looking like it's just about to break that 12K level. We're sitting at 11,949 uh, in the Discord. Everyone's getting a little bit excited as we'll just bring it across here. Uh, people are putting a couple of their charts and a couple of things <laughs> recommending that, that Bitcoin's going to probably go above 12K at the moment. So everyone's very excited at the moment. Uh, it's it struggled to kind of break this level. It's been sitting around the 11,800 uh, mark for quite some time. Had a little bit of a dip down to the 10,900 or 11,000 uh, mark but overall I'm seeing this pitchfork which I've drawn uh, from the bottom of the market down here uh, to the top of the market up here which is the 14k level that we hit um, and then we obviously made this large retracement down uh, to the bottom and this this is how it's painted my pitchfork in the background I've also got a Fibonacci retracement put in which tracks the the re recent tra track down uh, and it looks like we've retraced about 78% of that market loss since the mark high in 24th of June 2019. So overall, very bullish. As we can see, we're kind of in this second, uh, what we'll call quadrant uh, for, for this pitchfork and we're pushing up towards this uh, medium regression line, okay? So I honestly think that we probably will uh, push past this 12K level. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how, how long it was sustained. I wouldn't be surprised if we hit it and pulled off a little bit down towards the bottom of the, the first quadrant, the top of the first quadrant, sorry, uh, for this pitchfork, but we'll have to wait and see what basically happens. Overall, everything's looking very exciting. Uh, but moving on to Ethereum, Ethereum has been doing exceptionally well. As we can see, it's outperformed Bitcoin uh, since September last year. We've got almost to this buy zone, this sell zone, sorry, uh, where I will actually be probably selling off some of my Ethereum position. As a lot of you know, I'm holding Ethereum in multiples of 32. So when 2.0 comes out, I can stake those coins. Uh, it's more of a long-term play for me. I want to hold Ethereum for the next two, three years. However, I do think it will be wise to potentially take some profits up in this blue territory. I feel like, you know, definitely at this 0.04 level, uh, where one, uh, one, one Ethereum will buy you 0.04 of a Bitcoin. I think that there is definitely going to be some serious uh, resistance uh, up here. So anywhere between here and here, I think is a good area to, to take profits. Even if Ethereum didn't reach this area and it kind of came back out into this year, that's fine. I would just hold it long term. But I do think up in this area, it would be wise to potentially take some profits and, and look to buy it back down a little bit further. If I do do so, I will obviously be letting you guys know. Lately, the altcoin markets have been absolutely pumping. It's been unbelievable trading them. I'm going to jump into some of these uh, markets that I've been trading trading some of these coins that I've been trading uh, later on in just a, in just a couple of minutes. Um, but I have been taking off some of my Bitcoin positions and Ethereum positions to fund those altcoin trades and then selling back into Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and increasing my exposure that way. So jumping in just to the US dollar, Ethereum versus the US dollar, uh, you know, if, if we see Ethereum push up into this blue territory up here, uh, that would be probably another maximum, say, 21% push. So on the on the against the US dollar, uh, another 20 or so percent push uh, would would leave us at about 4,000, uh, 460. Sorry. So yeah, that's probably what I'm what I'm going to be targeting for my Ethereum sell back into the the US dollar, US tether for a bit, and then hopefully pick some up a little bit lower. Moving on to Teller. Now Teller has had an absolute run. I did actually mention in my previous video that one of our members bought right at the very bottom here uh, based on Chainlink, which is another Oracle coin. If you don't know what Oracle coins are, as I say, I recommend you jump in the mining store Discord and ask some of the guys there what are Oracle coins and what are they actually doing. A uh, very short version is they're basically price feeds for um, on-chain data. So if one project is it needs to pull data and, and find out what the price of Bitcoin is or what the price of Ethereum is, it, will, it could use something like Teller or 
Chainlink uh, as an Oracle coin that is a price feed for, for that data. Okay, obviously there's a lot more of complexities in there and the tech and how that actually works, but I do think these Oracle coins are a massive point uh, for the cryptocurrency market and I've been gaining my exposure through Teller. Now I actually sold off all of my Teller uh, over, over the weekend, sold at around about 26 US dollars. If we just quickly grab up the Teller, uh, maybe it was 27 US dollars. Tyler USD. I think today it's at 31. So yeah, potentially, you know, I might have sold a little bit early. Uh, weak hands, as, as some might say, uh, referring to Cal, my the co-founder of Mining Store. He thought it was a little bit weak hands selling out at this 26 level. However, I'm more than happy with those profits, guys. Uh, that's an absolutely huge run. We've been collecting Teller since around about down here. Uh, so, you know, that's, let's just take a look at that. Uh, up to 26, you know, almost a thousand percent. We nearly 10x on on that trade. So very very happy with that. Happy to hold out on Teller for a bit. Uh, potentially could keep having a run, but I do think it's going to be due a bit of a pullback. Uh, RSI is almost at 90, which is 20 points above the the standard 70 line where where things are usually overbought. So I do think we will see a pullback, and I very well may re-enter my position at, at a later date. Happy with the profits for now, sitting in US Tether, uh, ready to invest into other things and then potentially look to increase Bitcoin and Ethereum exposure uh, at a later date. But going back to the Teller uh, BTC, if I just grab that one back, Teller BTC. Just to recap, I, I, I do think, you know, right now, if, if you haven't uh, cashed in a little bit of your profits, it, it probably is a good time using the Fibonacci uh, extensions. A 1.61 is usually a good time to take some profits. 2.68 uh, is pretty good as well. You know, if it reaches there, that's why I sold. It was, it was very close to that 2.618. Uh, but, you know, I, I, it's very rare that we kind of see a straight push all the way to the 3.618 Fibonacci retracement level. So if it does, then great to you guys who are, who are holding strong hands so to speak. Um, I do think it's possible that Teller gets to maybe 40 US dollars, uh, but honestly, I think it's going to have a pullback before we see that happen. It does tend to have these pumps and then pull back quite a bit. Nevertheless, massive profits profits gains there. That's 10x on, on, on the returns. If someone put in $1,000 uh, worth of US Tether back here, they would have sold it for about 10,000 uh, where we've where we've put our price sell. So yeah, massive celebrations in the mining store Discord and, and good, good job to those guys who are both mining TRB uh, or those who bought some back here. Moving on to Loki. Now, Loki's held up really, really nicely. As we know, we got the announcement of a DeFi project um, or Loki entering the DeFi space, which I think is absolutely huge for price action on Loki and long-term hold. Uh, obviously, some people were willing to take profits up there and a lot of people closed off their nodes and we saw a bit of a retracement come back on the market. So that's what we've sort of seen this pullback here, but it's really good to see Loki hold itself back up uh, and, and we're still inside this kind of um, pitchfork, which I explained on BTC how I I draw those pitchforks, uh, you pull it from kind of a low point in the market to a high point back down to, to a retracement and then you can get this kind of uh, four quadrants where the market might um, trade through. So obviously this pitchfork picked it pretty well, it pushed it all the way to the top of the middle pitchfork which is often what we see, a pull back off the, the regression line, uh, pull back down to the bottom of the, of the first quadrant and now it looks like we're trading back up in that quadrant. So it'd be good to see Loki starting to, to trade back through a bit. I've had probably five or six more people uh, message me who are new members and old saying they want to buy another node. So they bought up 17,000 Loki and they've locked that uh, in, a, in a node, which is currently earning about 23% interest per year. Uh, so it's really cool to see people, you know, really, let's say, turned on by the Loki project. Uh, they're more than happy to, to take a position in it. Uh, it makes a lot of sense earning those uh, all those yields every month as you actually get paid out every day, which is great. And you can trade those yields on the market as well as continue holding a, a long-term exposure to a coin with a lot of potential. Uh, this is a coin that's actually bringing out a lot of uh, tech in the privacy space and I think this is going to be heavily demanded uh, going forward. I quite like the privacy space in, in the cryptocurrency industry. Some people don't don't like it too much um, but I really think Loki is a very transparent project that's providing a really quality uh, uh, a really quality product uh, and I definitely think it's well worth people getting involved. Uh, private messaging, pli private network um, interaction in terms of things like the Tor network and, and you Google everything like that, your search engine um, and also now leading into the DeFi space. Great project here. 
leading on to Digibyte. Now, Digibyte's playing out what we call a textbook material ascending wedge. Uh, now, as we can see, the market's had this massive pump and it's been bouncing between this kind of ascending wedge with a flat top and an and a, and a inclining uh, bottom. Uh, right now, we've just bounced off the top of it again. I was hoping that we'd actually break out on this one, uh, but it looks like we're going to have one more little play or it still may potentially break out. I'm not, I'm not confident that it's not just going to break out. It's still very well may, uh, but it looks potentially uh, like it has found a bit of resistance on, on there again, and it may go for one more hit down the bottom here before it takes off through. There's definitely room in this wedge for that to do so, so it would make sense if it did do that, uh, but I'm really looking for an extra kind of 30 to 50% uh, pump on this one. So if we go from here, that's 30% 30, 30 up to here, or potentially 50% up to here, we very well may reach all the way to the top of the 1.618 fib line, uh, which is a 77% pump, okay? So really good one here. Um, we've been holding Digibyte since well back down at the bottom here. We sold some out at the top uh, of this pump here. Actually, maybe it was this one right here. And then we took our um, positions again uh, down in this section. We've also been mining it um, with our miners, with our FPGA miners. So we've been acquiring a large amount of Digibyte through those miners uh, over the coming coming months. Uh, so looking forward to potentially selling off some of those positions into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and maybe even USD Tether, uh, depending on when, when we sell off and, and what we feel the market is, whether it's risk on or risk off. Uh, that's Digibyte for you guys. Really good play here. A lot of people are on this one. Um, and yeah, I think after we break out here, we could potentially start seeing profits. If we do break through this this um, ascending wedge, the bottom of it, I uh, actually might start taking some pro profits. Not all profits. I still think it could recover. Um, but yeah, that's the play that I'm looking looking at right now. Now we took positions on Compound, we picked the absolute bottom of the market and that's just the power of the mining store community. I mean, everyone was kind of sharing their trading ideas. If we just search in here, Compound uh, in the search function, everyone was kind of sharing at the same time when they wanted to enter into their Compound trade. Um, so I'm just gonna scroll back and actually try and quickly potentially find this. Um, maybe where we come out here. Give me one moment, guys. Uh, it was around here. Everyone was kind of looking at compound. We were, we were using the Fibonacci retracement uh, to try and find... Look, I'm not going to be able to find it right now, but that's okay. I'll go to this chart anyway that I posted just uh, the other day. It was yesterday. Basically, we've got compound here. Obviously, it's taking this massive retracement. We entered our positions just here at, 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 the, at the pinch point of this kind of triangle that I was in, indicating and right on this 23% fib line. Uh, it was, it was, it were, as soon as it dipped below that, um, similar to what Teller did when it first came out as a project, we, st we tend to see cryptocurrency coins have this massive hype phase when they come out. They kind of capitulate down to around this 23% fib line uh, and then obviously we broke out of this little triangle here uh, and that's where we took our position so we're up quite nicely if we just have a have a look at uh, what the return is right now uh, we're up about 40 percent on on that trade i think i entered in at about 136 i've got it marked there uh, and now we're up at 175 so i'm going to hold this one uh, potentially might take some profits if we start seeing a little bit of a more of a pullback uh, but ultimately i do think we can kind of pull this one up to the the 50 percent or, or even the 0.618 percent fib line. Um, overall, really, really good trade, guys. I know a lot of you guys got on this one. Uh, Grant from Mind Digital was on this one. Jules, our analyst, was on this one. I was on this one. And a whole bunch of other uh, members from the Mining Store Discord uh, was on this trade as well. So, awesome stuff there. Uh, a lot of the guys have a lot of faith in this project long term. Um, so, it's probably not too late to try and take some positions if, if you want to. It's kind of proven that it's broken out of this um, you know, downward trend now. Uh, definitely worth keeping your eyes on this compound card. It's got a lot of hype in the DeFi space. Probably too much hype, as you can see off this off this run here. Uh, but this is a fair price for I think anywhere between the 38% at 183 US dollars and the 23% at 136 dollars is is a fair price I would say. Uh, moving on, so that's uh, Compound against um, Bitcoin. The other one was Compound USD. I was looking at Compound USD because I entered it from a USD Tether, um, but some people would enter from Bitcoin. So as you can see here, uh, still, you know, obviously Bitcoin's having a run, so it's suppressing this price a little bit, uh, but nevertheless still pushing up into this next quadrant, okay? 
Moving on to reserve. So RSR, really cool project. We've been following it for a long time. Uh, we're not overly happy with some of the things that are going on with this project on a fundamental basis. Uh, one of the guys who we rely on for Intel on, on these projects, and he was the, the person who actually uh, recommended this pr project to us in the first place, is not exactly happy with how they're going at the moment. Um, so we're holding off on our positions. I was really looking to re-enter on this line here, and I didn't. Would have been a nice little run. Uh, a couple of the members in the community did actually re-enter there. And, a, and I think maybe are still holding their positions, but that would have been a 50 cent pump. Um, you know, probably if I was them, I, I, would, I would be taking my um, positions out for a little bit. I don't like investing in projects that I don't have a lot of faith in. It's very rare that I'll do that, unless it's something that I really think is just going to have pure price action, similar to compound, um, that, you know, I, I know there's enough hype behind it to have a, have a bounce off this level here. Um, even if I didn't like compound, which I, I don't mind this project at all, um, but I would still have bought that coin. Uh, with RSI, you know, I really wanted this for a more of a medium long-term hold, um, but I'm not overly happy with what's going on at the moment. And I'm just going to wait for a re-entry well down here um, or for them to, to sort a couple of things out. Handshake. Handshake's a, a coin that we've been mining in the Mining Store Discord a couple of months ago and people still holding their positions. As we can see, it kind of took a bit of a hit and we weren't really willing to, to sell quite yet. But it's been really great to see some positive price action. I think it's a couple of people might have actually taken their taken their positions and, and put it into some other, other projects which they think are going to have better runs than Handshake. Overall, you know, it's great to see the, the coin move up. You know, at least they've, they've got a, an extra, you know, double what they would have down at the bottom here. Um, not much too, not too much more to comment on a handshake other than we are seeing some pro positive price action, which of course we're kind of seeing across the board at the moment. Same thing with CKB, exact same comments as handshake. It's just a coin that we were mining um, o o over time. A lot of people actually really love CKB as a project though. It's definitely worth one checking out, Nervous CKB. Uh, it's similar to Ethereum, I guess. Uh, it's in the smart contract space. Uh, and definitely one to, to keep an eye on. I actually have a lot more um, faith in, in CKB than Handshake of, of kind of getting a bit of a rally. Um, I do think it's, uh, you know, due some love, so to speak. So it would be great to see that happen. Uh, Aleph is a coin that I've just been trading. Uh, I've been watching a lot of volume being pushed into it um, on on the in the DeFi uh, space through Uniswap and, and other platforms. Uh, so yeah, definitely worth you guys having a look into this Aleph project. More of a t technical trade that I'm trading at the moment. Uh, it seems to be kind of bouncing off this trend line here. Um, definitely one to keep your eyes on, guys. Uh, I think it can definitely push push through this kind of kind of 55, 60 level. Um, it's a very new project, uh, one that I'm holding the long term. Probably looking for more of a one dollar valuation. Um, yeah, definitely. I might cover a bit more of the fundamentals uh, later on and uh, give you guys a bit more of a rundown of what this project is about. Uh, but for the moment, I just wanted to quickly mention it, that I've taken some positions in it. Uh, I entered my positions around the 30 to 35 level and so did a lot of guys in the mining store discord. Anyone that's watching this, definitely have a look into the Aleph project, see what you think about it. I'll cover some more fundamentals at a later date. Um, other than that, Perlin, I sold out of my positions and I think I sold it at a pretty good time. Of course, sold a little bit early, but you can never pick the top of the markets. I sold uh, around about here um, at this mark here. Obviously, I could have probably got an extra, you know, 30 or so percent on that trade. Um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, look, it's coming back down anyway. You can never pick the top of the market. I was quite happy with that sell. Uh, Perlin actually released their DeFi project, which was what was hyping uh, the coin, going all the way up to up to here. I th can't actually remember exactly where I bought in on Perlin. I feel like it was around this middle territory here. Uh, I know I pretty much doubled my money, so... Um, yeah, around about 60 or 70 percent. Um, but yeah, so, sold out on Perlin, and I'm more than happy with that. I'm not going to re-enter Perlin. It's not a really project that I like. Just like I was saying before, sometimes I just do it because you know hype's going to drive it up, and I get on the back of it. Um, but yeah, I'm actually going to take this one off my charts now. Don't think I'll be re-entering into Perlin, but really happy with that 50 or 60 percent trade. Um, other than that, guys, that pretty much sums everything up. Really, really good stuff going in the markets at the moment. Really happy trading. Uh, I do feel like, it, you know, as I was saying, it's probably time to start taking a, a bit of profits, dollar cost average out a little bit. Never sell your full stack. You know, if you're holding five Bitcoin or 10 or whatever it is, even if it's one or two or half a Bitcoin, um, you know, and you bought it in down here and you're up, uh, you know, 200 or 200%, uh, it's always worth having a think about, okay, yeah, I might start taking some profits. And then when we see a capitulation event, you can re-enter with those 
profits uh, and increase your positions. Plus, you protect yourself. You know, if Bitcoin or Ethereum or the whole cryptocurrency market crashed, um, you do protect yourself and, and and you've you know taken some profits out. A really cool one, and you know, usually is taking taking out your initial investment. If you put in a thousand dollars or ten thousand or a hundred thousand, and you're up to you know ten x on that or five x or two x, you know, maybe take out some of your initial investment, if not all, and then you know you've got what we call funny money in the market. Um, you know, it's all profits and and um, yeah, you've kind of taken taken some skin out of the game. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, as I say, always link in the description to join the Mining Store Discord. A lot going on in here. There's a lot of really good strategies being shared. There's a lot of really good intel. Um, you know, just for an example, you know, I was I was just having a relaxing weekend, wasn't really looking at the charts, uh, but then I saw someone post in here that TRB had had a really really good run, uh, and I was able to sell out on, on those profits. You know, I can't keep an eye on the market 24/7, uh, but it's really good having you know this this Mining Store Discord and people constantly putting their recommendations in here uh, and letting everyone else know what they're seeing um, and, and what they're trading of course other than that um, yeah as you can see I put put out an announcement here trade alert that TRB was sold and trade trade update on Digibyte and um, keeping everyone informed uh, so yeah strongly recommend you guys get in here it's been absolutely awesome seeing all the new members come in really growing out this space together um, and making some you know lifelong long contacts as well so all the best everyone enjoy your weekend if anything crazy happens in the market I'll probably do another market update uh, but other than that, you guys take care and happy trading. All the best.